Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're gonna take a look at two of Godot 3.5's new features. The first one that we're gonna talk about is Godot is now on Android. And that is huge because that's going to basically allow us to do our game editing on the go. And it's going to allow and expand the Godot ecosystem to a bunch of new users. A lot of people just have Android tablets and a lot of people want something that they can use when they're away from their main system. And the next huge feature we're going to talk about is Godot low processor mode, which is not necessarily a new feature, but it is a new feature that now works for Android. Before it would flicker your screen and cause a bunch of problems, but now it actually works. So we're gonna run through some benchmarks and some testing to see just how much it actually helps with processor usage and with battery usage. So that's what I got in store for you guys today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is Godot running on Android. So if I flick down, you'll see that I am in fact on an Android phone. So I can actually pull this down. You guys can see it is my Android phone here. And I have connected to it actually my Steam controller because I actually don't have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to be using Godot with. But this is Godot on Android. So I can actually come in here and add in a 2D scene. I can right click and add in a child node, let's say, and you'll see that my little um, typing bar comes up here, my little keyboard. So I can actually just say something like Sprite, let's say. And I could come in here and select my Sprite right here. And I can go ahead and click on create. And you really get the full Godot experience, including being able to export out to your project. So you can actually come in here and go to export and you could add in an export template just like you can with your um, normal project. And if you want to, you can actually come over here and like, for instance, if I set the icon.png over here. So if I grab this and drag it over here, and I set it as my texture and I hit play on this scene right here. You'll see that Godot crashed, so that's always a good sign. Let's go ahead and reboot it and let's edit this project right here. There we go. And if I go ahead and try that again, we'll drag a sprite in. And if I hit play, you'll see that the game attempts to play. So you can actually see that we can actually play our game inside of Godot for testing on our Android device. Now, you might be wondering, why would this ever be useful, right? Why would I ever want to build on Android versus doing it on my own computer? Well, the reason why is because you can actually, inside of Android, test directly your touch code and things like that instead of using an emulated system. But I think that this is more than just, oh, Godot runs on Android. This kind of proves that Godot can be used to make applications. And I think that's what the developers are trying to get across is that you can actually use Godot to develop Android applications. Now I created a tutorial on how to use Godot to create an Android application just like last week. And one of the big things that I said that really troubled me was the power consumption. That's where low processor mode comes in. So what does low processor mode do for you? Well, low processor mode is designed to reduce your processor usage. It does this by only redrawing the screen when you have to, when something on the screen moves or when the user interacts with the screen is the only time that it will, re will redraw. And one of the ways that you can test this is you should see my little Android uh, phone right here is if you go into your settings and you scroll all the way down to your systems 
And you see how I have a developer options here. If you don't have developer options, if you just go into your about phone and go ahead and tap your build number right here and you just keep tapping it, you'll see it tells me no need, you are already a developer, but in your case, you might need it. Now, if you come up to your system and you go into developer options and you scroll down until you see drawing right here, show surface updates. And as a warning for people that are epileptic or sensitive to flickering screens, just make sure you don't look directly at this. Or if you want, I'll put a time code that you guys can skip to. So that way you don't have to see this, but it's going to flash the screen. So I'm going to turn this on and you'll see that the screen flashes pink. Now, if I go home, Hey guys, editor Mitch here. So the footage that you're about to see is a simulated footage of what I was seeing on my screen at the time. The reason why is because all of the footage that I have is just straight pink because of the amount of flashing that was going on at the time. So there's no way for me to be able to actually record that with my screen recorder because of how much the screen was refreshing. It just showed up as a solid pink video and I can show you guys some of that video here. So the what you're going to see is a simulated what I saw and I will leave a link to the APKs for both the 3.5 edition and a 3.4 edition so you guys can actually test it on your machine as well. So anyway, let's get back to the video. And I open up our weather application. You can see how much the screen is flashing here, right? How much the screen is being redrawn, which is really, really heavy on the GPU this, or the CPU, depending on if it, if it has a dedicated GPU or not you'll see that it's just constantly refreshing that screen, which is really hard on your CPU. But if I open up the other version, the 3.5 version, you'll see that it doesn't actually refresh. If I click, you'll see that it's refreshing my screen. If I click on the buttons, you'll see it refreshes the screen. But other than that, it doesn't refresh the screen. And the reason why... Uh, we're not getting all of my cloud data and things like that. Like the other screen had was because um, something with three, five is broken. So I threw in a bug report for it, but right now it's, it's kind of funky. I'm getting some mono um, class loading issues, but regardless, you'll see that it only refreshes when we touch the screen or when the screen needs to be redrawn. So that's how low processor mode saves you CPU usage and it saves you processing power. Now the downside to this, because there's always has to be a downside, is it hasn't increased in a slight latency. Now you're not really going to notice it so much if you're doing like an application, but if you're doing a game, it will be noticeable because... What it's doing is it's not redrawing the screen until something happens. And a lot of times, because it's not getting that uh, second by second update, it's it's uh, very, it's making your frame rate become variable. And anytime there's a variable frame rate, is as soon as that happens, a latency is going to be increased. So that's something that you got to keep in mind is if you're going to have something like a game where latency matters, you don't want to use low processor mode. Now, the question I know that everyone's wondering is how much does it reduce your CPU usage? In my benchmark, it reduced CPU usage by about 20%. I also saw a little bit of variation on my memory usage as well, but I have a feeling that that's not necessarily because of low power mode. It could be because the API call didn't fully go through and maybe some data set isn't being loaded into memory or something like that. So I wouldn't, I would take the memory uh, reduction of, of 10 megabytes with a grain of salt, but you can see here what the CPU and memory usage is for an app with Godot versus other applications. And you'll notice that here, where Godot low power is used, we saw a reduction of almost 21%, which is a 
mammoth size difference. It puts it way below other applications such as slide and accu battery monitor. Both of those applications are fairly light applications that I just pulled off the store. There were just two random applications. And then I wanted to see how it would stack up compared to YouTube, one of the premier Google apps that's out there. And as you can see, Godot Low Power trounces all of them which is really cool. And it's nice to see that low power mode basically tops the charts. So the next big question is how does that affect battery life? Well, if we come over to this next slide here, you'll notice that the Godot low power mode actually draws generally speaking less electricity than like Accu battery monitor or slide, which is awesome. And if it, you guys don't know what slide is, slide's like a Reddit, um, you know, application. Now, that being said, slide and Accu battery monitor are doing a lot more in the background than Godot is. So your mileage may vary on your power usage. But it's just to show that Godot can be used for Android applications and does not completely kill your battery life, which is extremely useful because one of the big things that people do when they download an app on a phone is that they make sure that it doesn't kill their battery too quickly. Because if your application kills a battery way too fast, then you're not going to want that app on your phone. So that sounds great. Low processor mode shows that we have reduced our CPU usage and, you know, it's improved battery life. So the next big question is how do we enable it? Well, if we open up Godot and we go to our project, project settings, and then we go to run, and then you can see right here, low processor mode. So if we go ahead and turn this on, from this point on, low processor mode is on. And then just below it, you have low processor mode sleep in U seconds. So what this is, is it's the time in which the system begins its redraw. So think of it kind of like you press the thing, it redraws, and then it goes to sleep. So it's the amount of time between your frames that it's basically sleeping. So that way it uh, can help reduce your CPU usage. Now, something that you'll notice is if you increase this too much, you'll get a lot more latency really, really fast because you are introducing latency directly to your project with this setting. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, once you export, it should go ahead and enable low processor mode. As long as you are on Godot 3.5, it should work. So what do you guys think? Do you think that low processor mode is actually worth anything? Do you think that Godot could be used for Android or iOS app creation? I think that it is a welcome addition to the Godot mobile ecosystem. And I think that it allows us to use Godot in a way that we haven't used it previously, which is always a welcome change in my opinion. But I would like to know what you guys think in the comments below. But that is all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. I know they removed the dislike button, but I can tell you that I still look at the ratios. I still pay attention and I make sure that the content I put out is stuff that you guys enjoy. This video, like all of my videos, was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to add it to my Trello board. Link is in the description and I will do my best to get to it. It might take some time, but I can tell you that I will get to your suggestion eventually. And hey, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment sections below. Or if you want to, so you can hop on our Discord and go ahead and ask it in our help desk. Anybody there will be more than happy to help you out with any issues that you might have. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. I will see you all next time. Thanks.